pick it up as we go. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Max Legault again with Shallow Gray's Magazine. How are you guys doing? We are here with our fan favorites, Gil Gerard and Felix Silla. Yes. Always, always happy to see them. It's amazing how many people meet you guys and then immediately comment, love meeting them. But spend five minutes with them, it's obviously why. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a, they are really down to earth, and they've, it's amazing when you start looking up how much you guys have done over the years. It's a, when we started with... Are you talking about the police report? <laughs> not, not the police reports in this case. Oh, okay. Okay. No, we're, we're specifically talking about... I paid enough to repress, though, so I was okay. Yeah, you, you try to look up Wikipedia, and you never know what you're going to get. They say you started, for instance, in college, but you dropped out. But then you went to work at a chemical plant, then they wanted you to get your master's. They get it a plant, no. Yeah, see? Yeah. You see, so you, it's, it's like, what is actually real or not? But were you actually a New York City cab driver? No, I was a guy going to acting school, and I drove a cab at night. I was not a New York City cab driver. See, see that's... I did a, I did a I'm, different show. And Merv started with this thing about the driving a cab and all this kind of, I said, Merv, I haven't driven a cab in over 10 years. I said, it sounds like I drove my, I just parked my cab out front. I said, you know, that's not what I went to New York to do. I went to New York to be an actor. I had to make a living while I was doing, while I was studying, so I drove a cab. You see, I'm that's pretty cool. sure they based the character in Taxi on you. I, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> yes, he said the exact same thing. Oh, did he? Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. well, they stole that from me. Uh, the I, bastards. I tell you what, God, you nothing not? sacred anymore. Guys, what do you man, want? What did you say? Why do you call him a bastard? I didn't call him a bastard. No, not him, but you called those guys bastards. Whoever said it, oh. the bastard. They stole it from me. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. Now, Felix was born in Italy. Yeah. And from what I understand, you uh, actually were trained as a stuntman and had a stint in the circus maybe originally. Is that true? Well, actually, I was, uh, I was not trained as a stuntman. I worked with the Wrigley Brothers for about... fell into the job. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, actually, I, I remember, yeah, actually, I did. Anyway, I worked with the Ringling Brothers for a few years. Ringling? Yes, and then in 1962, I decided to stay in Los Angeles, and I started working in the movie industry. But I was not trained as a stuntman. Right. Well, it seems to have worked out well for you anyway. Okay. Yes, it worked fine. Yeah. But what was your first, say, your first full-time role? In a, in a movie, a movie, movie or TV. They both yeah, qualify. A movie called The Ticklish Affair. With the Ticklish Affair, that's right. Yeah, they actually there was Ticklish, then they changed to uh, Moon, first was Moonwalk, and then they changed Ticklish Affair with Shirley Jones, Carolyn Jones, Gig Young, uh, Ed, Ed Buchan, uh, Red Buttons, and he never uh, had a dinner, right? Yeah, I never had a dinner. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, you know the joke of I never did, did it, right? Yeah. Anyway, that was my first movie. And I was uh, doing stunts, hanging on the cable on the parade, 110 feet, every every day. And I didn't know anything about the business. I, I really got screwed you because... <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't know anything. We call that trial by fire. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, they heat hanging me on the screen every day, 110 feet off the ground. And I didn't know what to get paid. So I kept asking people, said, what should I get paid? You know, oh, nobody wanted to talk to me because I was a newcomer, you know. And then after that, I did a Bonanza, an episode of Bonanza. Right. It was the host in the Leprechaun. Yes. And it is the funniest, the funniest uh, TV show. That was one of the best I ever produced. So they wanted to do a sequel. See, now I have to go back and watch it again. It comes on around March, around St. Patrick. Either the day before or the day after. As a mist, every year St. Patrick, and you're gonna laugh your rears off when you see it. It's so funny. That's good. I, so, could, use, I could use some I, laughing off of my I, rear. That's so a, anyway, oh, we could get dirty, right? <laughs> so anyway, they were they were gonna do the sequel, and they refused. The, uh, the long I'm sorry, I'm taking a nap. I'm just. Uh, oh, good. Uh, good night, Ivy. Don't worry, Gil. Anyway, you're never next. Mind, never mind. <laughs> so anyway, they wanted to do a sequel, and uh, Lon Green and Pernell Robert they refused it. They said, well, they're taking too much away from us. Oh, well, Dan Blocker and Michael Landon were great. So, oh, yeah, let's do another one. The other two assholes asked, uh, whatever. They didn't want to do it. So we didn't do it. And then after that, everything came along. You know, like uh, Bonanza, Buck Rogers, and Adam's Family, Planet of the Apes. Not whatever. necessarily in that order. Huh? Oh, yeah. No, no, in that <laughs> order. The Russians are coming, for example. Uh, right, exactly. Yeah. All right, now moving back to Gil. Yeah, back so, to Gil. Uh, all right, so I, 
<laughs> so you were working, you were going to school, and you were doing a taxi to help make ends meet. Now, but what actually was your first step moving into acting? I know you did like 400 commercials. My first step moving into acting was to get on a plane and fly to New York. Okay, let's go for the second, third, fourth, or fifth step. Now. Acting school, uh, the American Musical and Dramatic Academy, and then um, I actually got a break driving a cab. Oh, that's right. Now, you met somebody and they suggested to... He was a fair. He came on, he got in the cab, and we, I was taking him from one place in Manhattan, actually West 61st Street, over to the east side. And he just started talking, and he said, uh, uh, I can tell you're not really, you're not a cab driver, per se. He said, what do you do? I said, well, I go to acting school, and I'm just driving a cab at night to pay my rent and buy food and things like that. And he said, I had a feeling. And so he said, have you ever thought about doing extra work? And I said, what does it pay? He said, uh, like $30 a day and you get lunch. Well, I wasn't eating every day, so that sounded pretty cool. All right, so that was a step up. Can't take the deal. What I was doing. I didn't make as much, but I had, I had uh, food, so that was all right. So I, um, he said, give me a call next week. He said, I'd like to help you out. So I gave him a call next week, and the next day I was on the set of Love Story as an extra. Now that's right. Love Story was the next step. Yeah. And then I got a, a cast in a bit that ended up on the cutting room floor. And, um, and then, uh, let's see, what else? Then I read for a movie at an agent's office. I got an agent and got the movie. The movie was kind of a crappy movie. The agent was a piece of crap also. And... Uh, but every, from what I looked at, even really for the both of you, you guys have done the classic, you really start out whatever you can get, and then sort of worked your way up until something good came along. You, you put in your dues. Would you say that might be true? Yeah. Everything, I mean, people have said, you know, what was your big break? And I said, I don't really see anything as being a big break. It's just has always been a progression upward. Uh, I did over 400 commercials in New York. I did a soap opera in New York, The Doctors. Um, then uh, I uh, I did a movie there, uh, and then I was Man on a Swing with Clifford Robertson and Joel Gray. Uh, then I was sent out to L.A. to screen test for a couple of pilots. Came back to New York uh, on the screen test for the pilot. Then I was hired to do a Beretta. He saw the Screen test I did, liked it, so hired me to play a guy trying to kill him. And uh, while I was out there doing that, I read for Airport 77. I got that role. Yeah, you were a boyfriend, if I remember? Of uh, Yeah, of Lee Grant. And uh, I, was, I played Christopher Lee's assistant. I think he was an oceanographer, if I remember correctly. Um, and then after Airport 77, I went back to New York. And then I got flown back out to do a movie. And it was actually a pilot that turned into a movie called The Busters, and then uh, I got I started getting terminal jet lag, so I decided to, move, to go ahead and move from New York to to uh, L.A. It took me two years to get rid of my New York driver's license. I was I'm really I was really yeah, but you didn't have to renew your hack though. Yeah, that was it. No, like, no. well, my hack license you have to renew it, but I didn't have I wasn't worried about that. I hadn't driven a cab. I haven't. I hadn't driven a cab for uh, after the first six months I was in New York, and luckily that was. Yeah, it worked out well then. I killed seven drivers that year that I was driving. Not you personally. No, well, they didn't kill me. Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, no, you were not the killee. Like, you know, the other side or something. I mean, no, I didn't get killed. I only came close once, I think. You mean you mean someone tried to mug you? I only came close once. I had a feeling that this was had been a mistake picking these people up, but it turned out okay. It's like they had a meeting about it. It was interesting because they kind of discussed it, I think, and then they they uh, just paid me and walked away. I was in a really really bad area of uh, Queens actually, but it looked like it looked like the back lot of Universal did when we shot Anarchy. Yeah. I mean it was just it was a wreck, and I thought, oh shit, I'm really messed up here. They're going to find my body up among all the bricks and stuff. Oh, but luckily, it, it worked out okay, obviously. Well, obviously, yeah, they didn't kill me, nor did they mug me. Well, not, but not that I can tell. Yeah. Yeah. 
But even I basically made a I made a living in this business since 1970, solely from this business. That's acting I'm talking about. Uh, is that what that is? Yeah, yeah, family well, acting. Know. Some people would say no. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, that's it. That's what do you want? What do you want? Same thing with me. I started out. We do a lot of extra work, a lot of stand in, because in the, in the 60s and the 70s, they use a lot of kids, kids and animals. Yeah. And they, you know, we have to stand in while they're setting up this, this shot, whatever. Yeah, I understand you've done a lot of stand in work. And a lot of stunt work. I dubbed a lot of kids for it. Yeah, was the, he stood that, in for me, actually. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He was discovered standing in for me. Are you completely serious? I, or are I, you, I, did, I was going to say, a, you know, as a kid, maybe? Well. <laughs> I wouldn't, no, no. Am I completely yeah. serious that he's... He's never completely serious. Let's just get that out, out front like right now. In the morning or something? <laughs> I mean, really. What, what have you been smoking? What, I'm talking to the guy yeah, over I here. I know. What have you been smoking? I haven't been smoking anything. I well, haven't. that's why he's... But he's like, are you really serious? I'm like, excuse me? I hope he's I only did that one extra bit. Other one than that, I started, bit. I did well, bit parts. We worked five well, days a week. That was the only jobs. I assume you two first met on the set of Buck Rogers, yes. of course. Yeah. And it, you don't seem to have uh, gone far from each other since. Well, he lives in Vegas. I live in Georgia. That's, That's nice. pretty He moved so far away. Yeah. He, wa he was going to move to Cuba, but they didn't want him over there. Yeah. We've been friends ever since. Yeah. I was going to say, you, you guys seem to know each other pretty well. Huh? He was, no, Why would I, I move to Cuba? I thought you were I'm not, not Spanish. No, you're not? You no. I think any, I can speak a little Spanish. Might have to do with the extradition. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, anyway. I turned down a trip to, to Cuba. It was beautiful. A long time ago. It's beautiful. Though. I hear it is, but yeah. I just, I don't like putting money into, in the communist pocket. I wouldn't go to Russia. There was, I had, was offered a thing in Russia. And I said, uh, you know, I'd love to see all the stuff over there, but I'm not going to give money to a government whose sole purpose is to overthrow our government. Sure seems that way. I was supposed to do a love boat in China, and I said, I'm not doing that because that government wants to do without do out my government. Why would I give them money? I, and I don't understand why manufacturers go over there. They're giving them money. Do you know that all the action figures? Yeah. All the action figures, including G.I. Joe, all that stuff. It's Taiwan and China, right? No, no, it's made in China, not in Taiwan. Taiwan is free. They made It's made in China, and it's owned by the People's Liberation Army. They get all the profits from all of those action figures that we buy our kids. All that money goes to buying arms in China. It's like, are you nuts? Why in the hell would you be giving money to a government that wants to overthrow your government? I try not to personally. Huh? I try not to personally. Try not to personally what? Buying Give my money to China. Have you tried not to? Are you yeah, it's not, e stuff? it's not easy, yeah, absolutely. That, I know, really. They take meat and send it over there to be butchered. As you can see, Gil is very... I'm very pro-American. Well, he's very pro... He's actually quite outspoken and very introspective. Yeah. Um, he stays active, of course, in the not just in the acting community, but he likes to... Like when he posts to his Facebook, it, you actually will get replies from him because he'll do a lot of political posts and talk about his beliefs, but it's never anything that's mean. But Lord help you. If you try to post something that is mean, and you can't back up your claims, it's, you know, it's a, I, I've seen you take a few guys to task on that. It's like, all right, that's fine. Show me your proof. Exactly, and you know what? They never do. Yeah, they backed they off. From them again, I go look. If you want to say something, you're saying all I do is put this out. Fine, give me your idea. Put it out there. I'm go I'm willing to let you do it, and I never hear from them again. It's because they can't prove what they're saying. It's just. BS, most of it. So yeah, but so he encourages a lot of actual discussion, but sometimes they just but I'm very much, bow out. I'm very much, uh, I'm very much pro-American. This is my country, and I love my country. It's given me great opportunities. And yeah, we have problems, but every country has problems. You know, I don't walk around with my head up my ass thinking that oh, well, we know we have these terrible problems. We must be the worst country in the world. It's like no, we just have we have problems and we discuss it. It's very open. Try doing that in Russia. Or China, or any other country, basically, without getting your ass kicked. Agreed. Now, at least we can talk about it here. Whether you agree with it or not, there can be a discussion about it. I'm just sorry that we can't have, we've gotten to a point in our society where you can't have a civil discussion of two opposing views. And that's sad, because, I mean, it's like, 
I'm willing to listen to you, but you're not willing to listen to me. I get shouted down. I get called names. It's like, that's not telling me anything. Well, it's not to your face, which is one of the problems with the Internet, because people can do the faceless posts. It does, you know, it's like, oh, you blah, blah, blah. It's like, what are you going to do about it, right? What I do is I delete them. Forget about it. All right. Yeah. I, I agree with you. It's the same thing with me. I was born in Italy, but this is my country. I yeah. make my living here, and uh, I, I, won't, I don't think I will ever go back there because it's the poverty and everything else. But he's right. But the, everywhere you go now, they have this problem, you know. Why they don't, let's ar- talk about it. Like, you know, yeah. let's talk but about the it, what the arguments are. Everything gets blown up. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, don't get me started about all this, a lot of this stuff. But anyway, it just, it's like, yeah, we have problems, but we work them out. And we don't really, in spite of the feeling that certain things are at an epidemic level, it's like if you really look at it, the individual circumstances are terrible and tragic. However, if you look at, we have 325 million people in this country, and if you look at the number of these incidents that have happened, whichever ones, I'm not going to get into it because then we've got a problem, but it's like you look at the number of them and it's like, you know, how many of them have, the, have actually happened? Have, has there been over 100 out of 320 million people? Right. So everything just gets blown up. I get it. It's tragic. It's sad. But it's, you know, we got 320 million people in this country. You're not going to oppress or push down madmen or whatever without, without taking away all the rights of the 320 million people. Agreed. So if you want to have that kind of thing, and they still have problems with people places like China. So even with an absolute dictatorship, with ironclad controls over everybody, they still have problems. Just different ones. True. Every country has its problems. Yeah. We're certainly trying to deal with ours. Yeah. Now, anyway, yeah, I where are you guys going after this now? Go, it's supposed to do something in New York, right? The first week yes. in New York? WinterCon is what called. Is called? And, Find out okay, why. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah we get into that in the middle of an interview. That's good. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we have to call him. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's in Queens. Wouldn't be the first time. At the old Aqueduct racetrack. Outdoor? I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> I know, like your. Uh, it's a casino. So, oh. yesterday we went for our photo op with these guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, they didn't realize where it's going to be. They. The organizers decided, in their wisdom, to hold the photo op outside on possibly. The organizers, I just asked about that. Ah. It was the people who were doing the photo op. Oh, just the people who were doing it. They offered the entire fifth floor of this thing. Right, and they didn't think there was going to be enough room. Yeah. Let's see if, so let's go stick everybody in the tent. On the worst cold snap of the year. It's 22 degrees. What are you in a hurry? No, he just wants to keep me moving. He's getting bored. But Gil likes wearing shorts because it does get really hot in these cons. It does, yeah. So it was a little cold for the... air that gets put out, if you get my meeting. Yuck, yuck. (laughs) (laughs) We'll be in there. Yeah, so I apologize for that, but thank you for the photo op. That was wonderful. And I hope people will go ahead and see them in New York. And this is... I guess we should wrap this up. There's got people who want to come and see you. (laughs) I guess he doesn't. That's okay. That's what editing's for. Pissed off half your audience now with a, you know talking about how I love my country. Uh, you love your country. You're allowed to do that. Good. Yeah, so. That's the whole point. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, after this lovely announcement stops, this is Max Legault with Shallow Graves Magazine. Once again, hanging out with Jill and Gil and Felix, our Gilly. favorites. <laughs> Jilly, I know. Gilly. So sorry. Gilly, it's his new like nickname. I said, was it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I need to drink more in the morning. Thank you all very much, guys. Have a great day. Bye now. <laughs> you think? I'm not going to touch this stuff. Uh, You're ready. I'll never be ready. Uh, I'm trying to uh, hum. I'm trying to <laughs> perfectly balance myself. <laughs> nice watch. And it's one of my favorites. Yeah. All right. Have you got the red dot? I do not have the red dot. No. I know. I'm sorry. I don't. So we can't talk to him now. He doesn't have the three. And he's got a Samsung, which is a piece of shit. What? I don't play all with apples either. Hey, each to his own. You only eat apples, right? You don't wear them.
I do eat them. Just start recording. <laughs> Trust me, I did. That's that's a good idea.